Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see so many people here with us this evening. Uh, thank you for joining us for the SC-166 meeting. The time is 603, and I'd like to call the meeting for order. Roll call. Nelson. Here. Lanier. Sharon. Here. Blackman. Here. Trout. Here. Lisa. Here. Right. Here. The first item on the agenda are our audience comments. No one signed up, but I know Mr. Kennedy, you asked to make comments. Do you still want to make comments this evening? Come on. Hello, my name is Suzanne Rickman. I live in the district. Um, thank you for allowing me the time to speak tonight. I'm here as a concerned member of the community. There are two areas of concern for me. The first being the vaccine requirement for employment for faculty and staff. The second being the denial of the religious exemptions of the faculty. While I respect um, your service and desire to make Blossmar School District 161 a wonderful place for families to have their children come to be educated, I can't help but question the decision to require the faculty and staff to be vaccinated against the COVID-19 virus. I'm not here to argue about whether the vaccines are safe or effective. But I'm here to argue that there are still many unanswered questions concerning vaccines, and that imposing a requirement as a condition of employment that employees take certain drugs is unconstitutional and unlawful. Um, I'll start with the Nuremberg Code, which was adopted worldwide in 1947 as a code of medical ethics to which physicians must conform in carrying out experiments on human subjects. The first of the 10 standards to which doctors should adhere is that of voluntary or consent. I won't read the quote from uh, what I printed off just because I know there's a timeline here. I think you're all pretty familiar with it. Um, I'm sorry? I'm sorry? It's a little bit hard to talk when I'm within six feet, so. Okay. It might be argued that the vaccine is no longer an experiment, that it has been approved by the FDA. Thank you. It has been approved by the FDA. Um, however, Comirnaty is not yet available in the United States, and the only vaccines that are available are all under EUA. I have been made aware that the FDA website says the FDA approved community and the two EUA authorized formulations of Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for ages 12 years and older when prepared according to their respective instructions for use can be used interchangeably without presenting any safety or effectiveness concerns. The products are legally distinct with certain differences that do not impact safety or effectiveness. So when I look though at the FDA website and then I look at the Comirnaty insert, I see on page five, item 2.3, vaccination schedule, it says, there are no data available on the interchangeability of Comirnaty with other COVID-19 vaccines to complete the vaccination series. Individuals who have received one dose of community should receive a second dose of community to complete the vaccination series. So they are saying right there, they are not interchangeable, or that there's no data available on interchangeability, and that leaves question. Looking further into the uh, insert, there's a part here that talks about myocarditis and pericarditis, it says post marketing data demonstrate increased risk of these two conditions. Information is not yet available about potential long term sequelae. So they still don't know everything. There's no long term studies. Um, post marketing experience the following adverse reactions have been identified during post marketing marketing use of community, including under emergency youth hospitalization, because these reactions are reported voluntarily from a population of uncertain size, it is not always possible to reliably estimate frequency or establish 
uh, causal relationship to vaccine exposure. So there's still, again, questions. There's um, data available on administering to pregnant women, and it is not known whether community is excreted in human milk. Data are not available to assess the effects of community on the breastfed infant or on milk production excretion. There's also, has not been evaluated, community has not been evaluated for the potential cause to carcinogenic, carcinogenicity, genital toxicity, or impairment of male fertility. It says it right here in the insert. And there's a few other items, but I'm going to move on for time's sake. Um, as an aside, oh yeah, I did that. Going back to the FDA saying that Pfizer's EUA and community are legally cert distinct with certain differences. I can't help but wonder what those certain differences are. We have a right to know. When a FDA request was filed to Pfizer on their adverse events, they requested to keep that information from the public for 55 years. A judge said no and ordered the release of the preliminary findings. Here is this report, which shows on page seven, that there were 42,000 case reports, over 42,000, and that 11,361 did not recover at the time of the report from some kind of injury, and there were 1,223 fatalities from the vaccine. There are other things in here of note. Another one here about pregnancy. 270 mothers of those reported a spontaneous abortion, 23. Um, premature death with neonatal death, spontaneous abortion with intrauterine death. There were two of those. And one other, one other death. So again, I'm not trying to say uh, you know, is the risk worth the, the uh, you know, which, which, which is the greater risk. But my point is that it's not approved. The, the, the drug that has been approved is not available, and the one that is being given is there are adverse events. There are things, and it is illegal to require it. Um, there are key differences between fully licensed vaccines and those authorized under EUA. EUA products are considered experimental under US law. This means they cannot be mandated. And everyone has the right to refuse such vaccines without consequences. In an order issued on November 12th in Doe et al. versus Austin, U.S. Federal Judge Allen, Judge Allen Windsor, U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Florida, ruled that the Department of Defense cannot mandate vac vaccines that only have EUA. As recognized by the judge under the EUA statute, recipients of EUA drugs must be informed of the option to accept or refuse administration of the product. Judge Wendler also pointed out that DOD's guidance to help documents explicitly say only FDA-licensed COVID vaccines are mandated. Under 21 code, U.S. Code Section 360 concerning, quote, authorization for medical products for use in emergencies, it is unlawful to deny someone a job or an education because they refuse to be an experimental subject. This is also made clear in the FDA fact sheet provided to patients receiving any Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. It states, under the EUA, it is your choice to receive or not receive the vaccine. Should you decide not to receive it, it will not change your standard medical care. The Illinois Healthcare Right of Conscience Act also uh, says, it is the public policy of the state of Illinois to respect and protect the rights of conscience of all persons who refuse to obtain receive or accept or who are engaged in the delivery of arrangement for or payment of health care services and medical care, whether acting individually, corporately, or in association with other persons, and to prohibit all forms of discrimination, disqualification, coercion, disability, or imposition of liability upon such persons or entities by reason of their refusing to act contrary to their conscience or conscientious convictions in providing pain for or refusing to obtain receive, accept, et cetera, et cetera, any medically appropriate care. And the Illinois Health Care Right of Conscience Act has been being used in um, cases within Illinois, and those cases are being won with that act. 
which is why um, Governor Pritzker wanted it to be repealed and be amended. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals Judge Kurt Engelhardt ruled against buying a vaccine requirement for larger American companies in a ruling of early November stating that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, known as OSHA, the federal agency tapped to enforce the mandate was not created to make sweeping pronouncements, this is a quote, make sweeping pronouncement on matters of public health affecting every member of society in the profoundest of ways. The mandate is staggeringly overboard, overbroad, the judge said, noting that it does not take into account the diversity of workplaces across the country nor the fact that COVID-19 is more dangerous to some employees than to other employees. A federal judge in Utah ruled against the mandatory vaccines. Last week, the United States Senate voted 52 to 48 to overturn Biden's vaccine mandate. The Chicago Public Schools have removed their vaccine requirement for CPS teachers. On top of all this, we know that the vaccines do not stop the transmission of COVID. From what I have heard, the majority of COVID cases in our district have been vaccinated individuals. Whether it is majority or not, there are vaccinated people contracting COVID. Most of the people I know personally who have contracted COVID in the last month have been vaccinated. Again, I am not against the vaccine. If people want to get it, that is their choice. I am, I am standing for the rights of individuals to refuse it based on the above information. I argue that there are still a lot of unknowns and there are still a lot of questions out there concerning the safety and efficacy of all vaccines that are available. That being the case, I ask the board to please reconsider its vote to require the vaccine as a condition of employment in School District 161. The next part of my talk, I'm going to just try to make it short because I know the board is not responsible. Um, we're at about 10 minutes. I'm sorry. If they're waving, I'll just you provide the materials that you're looking at to us. Either you can give the actual paper copies to me, okay. and I can have them um, copied and sent to the rest of the board. And Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but I want to make sure. I, I'm gonna, you can continue, but I just want to make sure that you provide everything that you have with us. It's just maybe you can start to wrap up a little bit. I, I didn't bring a ton of information, so this part will be short. It's because I know that they're going to closed session and that that decision to uh, to deny the religious exemptions wasn't the board's decision. It was um, outside of the board. So um, I just would like to say, though, that um, is uh, the, the religious, I believe that what was said to them was you have not identified any religious basis that would prevent you from getting vaccinated. You have identified no religious practice or requirement that would be violated by you receiving the vaccine. And it is um, up to individuals, sincerely held religious beliefs, to decide if there is a conflict for them to in, um, either ingest or inject a foreign substance into their bodies. And um, I don't think that it's the place of people who are supposed to be providing accommodations to decide whether it is uh, applicable to someone with certain sincerely held religious beliefs. So I'll just leave it at that. And if there's any further um, issues with this, I'll address the board in another in a letter or a for us. Thank, thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind leaving your materials with us? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is it helpful? Then we'll, we'll, we'll scan them and send them to everybody. You can give them. Oh, yeah. You've got to scan them. We'll make sure that. We'll make There's sure. a lot of papers. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you